Hi everyone, this is Nabir Watcher, and I have a Jeff P. exclusive. You heard it here first and nowhere else. One of the signs in the sub heavens, or signs in the software. I am on Solar System Scope, showing you the birth of Neptune at 8960 BC on September the 23rd. What an interesting day. That's the day that the signs, the Revelation 12 sign appeared. The birth of Neptune. I just think it's pretty cool. We'll see this planetary planet Neptune. Let's go back just one minute after midnight and it disappears. Let's click back at 16 minutes after midnight. It appears and it disappears. See that? <laughs> and Neptune hasn't yet to even have an orbital path because it hasn't even moved yet. All these other planets have an orbital path. You can watch the beginning of the path. Also, I wanted to say that Neptune was born a water planet named after a water god in the water constellation Aquarius on September 23rd. A little Easter egg in the software. Interesting. What are the powers that be trying to tell us whoever created the software program? And no other planet does this, by the way. I went back. 20,000 years and all the plans for me. This is the only one that just starts and has a, a start date. If you want to go back millions of years, you might get lucky and find your next Easter egg. So don't take my word for it. Go down, download the Solar System Scope software program and see this for yourself. Okay, so I'm just going to fast forward this and watch the orbital path begin. Zoom is out, and now you can see that Neptune will begin to trace out its orbital path. There you go. This little orbital path has begun. I could speed this up by clicking on the planet and drag it along, and now you've got your first orbital path, 165-year orbit. Pretty cool, huh? Well, you heard it here first. September 23rd, water planet Neptune in the water constellation Aquarius. That's pretty cool. Next, I want to show you the three planets that are now. Yeah, you, you heard it right. Three planets now appearing in a harbor in Italy. One, two, three round fuzzy objects that never move in the sky because you're not actually looking at the planet. You are looking at a lens, an ultra-thin lens that can darken in the sky. And the other evidence is in Laguna Beach, California. This is a live stream here. We could see one, two, three, and a third planet forming here. One, two, three. And I have one more. But before I jump into that, let's talk about this lens array real quick. Here is a diagram I got from the boogeyman. <clears throat> kind of what we're looking at here. This is the lens that is bending light to the planet to the observer. So what's thinking it's over here when it could be way off on the horizon. In fact, there's a series of these lenses that bend the light all the way across the horizon. What we're just looking at is the light dimming technology of JPL who installed it who can electrically change the density of the silicon pillars, making it darker. Let's go a little more on that topic of this lens array. I had made a video about the sun halo and how the lens array create this same halo effect. Here is a simple magnifying glass pulling all the light to a single point. And that's pretty much what's happening with these lens arrays. And over on Wolfgang in Austria, we have the same similar objects. Again, those aren't planets. Those are lenses bending this light. One, two, three lenses in the same shape as the Orion constellation. We can go back in time on this. I'll hit the time lapse button. Let's watch. They hold pretty much steady. What I'm going to show you on another camera how these lenses create eight projections of the very planets they're hiding 
a holographic like planet. It's not a hologram, it is a projection. There's a difference. One's created with lasers. This is just refocusing the light. Let's jump over to this one. Let's watch this lens array in action. With the sun simulator and the lens array, I think this is pretty cool. People say, where is the real sun? It's behind the simulator. In fact, many of you say, remember the sun used to be yellow. It still is. What we have is during the sunrise and sunset, anybody with a camera can capture the yellow sun, but only at when it sets. Let's go back in time on the sunrise. See the real sun in the background. If you look carefully here, you can see the lens array that it's going to pass through to make the our, our fish, fake sun larger than it is, and when it does, it gets bigger than the real yellow sun behind it. When the sun orbits, or moon, Earth orbits around the real sun, the sun simulator orbits around the Earth. Go forward in time, let's check this out. Watch how the white fake star lights up this lens array, gets bigger, washes out the real sun, the yellow real sun in the background begins to fade, and gets washed out by the light of the artificial sun, and another interesting thing is happening. The lens array is also creating a projection and of this holographic like planetary body here. These, you want to call them orbs, call them whatever you want, it is the result of this lens array lighting up right in front of the sun. If we do one mouse click at a time, you could see these lens arrays. I'll show you what I mean by the lens array. And almost every time I make these videos, this is a different camera. We see the most obvious lens array here, these lens arrays. And they are red lens petal effect because the infrared light does not bend as sharply as the other wavelengths of light. It has a larger magnetic field, therefore it does not bend as sharply as like ultraviolet in the other colors. So here we can see these lens arrays here as well. So you have smaller overlapping lenses being held there in the gravity. I know there's no gravity, it's the magnetic field of the electromagnetic field of the Earth which I'll have a video about why there is no gravity and gravity actually has poles and North and South Pole. Check that out. So, that being said, we go back to this video here showing the lens array as it rises. The sun rises up into the lens array, making it look bigger than it is, washing out the light of the true sun, and also projecting because of the planets between all of them during these eclipses showing this here this projection of a planet not a hologram a projection that's what i've been showing you in all of these videos many of these videos that red spider for example my videos is a projection of this object the real object is further behind the lens being bent around the lens like i showed you in this diagram that you well Boogeyman, the Boogeyman channel. And remember my last video, I talked about the red and blue Kachina. Every time they approach one another, have this discharge, plasma discharge, the reason for the flash in the sky. Let's watch it from San Diego, from this YouTuber who posted from her cell phone. How do I know it's a cell phone? Well, the format here, they told, this is what you get when you hold a phone vertical. You should hold it. Horizontal, you'll get a bigger picture, but when you hold it, anyways, I could tell it was a cell phone. Let's watch the video. Very short. I'll play it in slow motion. It's very fast and intense. The settings. Bam. Let's watch that in slow motion. Now, for those trolls out there that want to see this is perfectly normal green flash the sun, you know what? There is a green flash, but don't confuse. A simple transition of colors is what they mean by the green flash of the sun. This is not a transition of color. This is an intense light flash with the amplitude of light. 
flashing. Let's watch that again. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. And us. I mean, that was so fast. Yeah, you saw some green too. Now, there's plenty of YouTube videos out here like this one, a perfect green flash, perfectly normal, just showing a transition of colors. And you will see the green because it transitions the, the colors during the sunset like a prism of light. So I hope you like this video. And I hope that I asked for help, and I thank you so much, and I was overwhelmed. I thought it was so awesome that you guys had gave so much, and uh, that was totally underestimated how much people cared for me and about my videos. So thank you very much, and if you feel led to support me in my time of need, because I was laid off from my job for being a whistleblower, I have links in my home page you could go fund me or paypal preferred thank you for watching have a blessed day